Welcome back, guys. It's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto Update. Solana, seeing stars, shot off to 130 bucks. We have now been dumped by about 20%. Slow recovery here, but what is causing Solana's freak price dump? And is there a possibility of the market continuing further north? We'll have a look at that in today's video, looking at some of the candlestick patterns that we can see have bearish signs to them. So before we get started, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon so you can see all of these videos pop up in your feed or don't click them. You can always uncheck them later if you don't feel like there's any value at all coming from today's video. So we're going to do a good solid update. Solana seeing stars. What do I mean by seeing stars? This pattern right here, you probably, maybe you're familiar with it, a shooting star. So that's basically just this one day that we saw close on the 31st of August, shooting star. And there's particular criteria to meet for a shooting star. This is a definition and application that we have in Investopedia. Doesn't mean that all of these particular patterns have to work, but they also they generally do and they should appear in an uptrend. They have other criteria and how you apply them to the chart. So a shooting star is a bearish candlestick with a long upper shadow, little or no lower shadow, and a small real body near the low of the day. What is that? Okay, so that's the shadow. Well, we call it a wick as well. That's the real body, but I guess they call it a shadow because a body has a shadow. And this is the small shadow at the bottom of it. Is that what we're seeing today? Pretty much. Pretty much that's what we're seeing on Solana at the moment. Now, you might also wonder, why am I using candles today rather than bars? Well, this pattern is also in uh, bar charting analysis um, that GAN used, but I've seen it called a key reversal bar because it kind of looks like a key and it's reversing the trend of the market. That's generally what happens with these, uh, these bar patterns. But for the majority of people, they'll know it as a candle and it's known as a shooting star. So it's also a reversal pattern. But if you're looking at it in bars, that's the name for it. If you're looking at it in candles, this is the name for it. I'll use candles today because as I said, majority of people look at candles. Now, the shooting star is a bearish candlestick. We've gone through that. It appears after an uptrend. So have we seen an uptrend? We sure have seen a massive uptrend. The other piece of the puzzle for candlesticks to be considered a shooting star, the formation must appear during a price advance. So the, the market is going up. That's a price advance. If it's within the body of a price action movement, it's not necessarily as strong. And that's where some people get unstuck using a shooting star saying every point has to be a reversal. And that's not the case. Distance between the highest price of the day and the opening price must be more than twice as large as a shooting star's body. So... This is the opening price on the left-hand side up here and the closing price is on this side. What did it say? Distance between the highest price of the day and the opening price must be more than twice as large as the body. Okay, so here's the body. It's tiny. Yes, we can easily see with the naked eye that this wick or the shadow is way more than twice this range of the body. Okay, so that meets that criteria. There should be little to no shadow below the real body. Little to no shadow. Shadow. Well, there's a bit of a shadow, but in comparison to the uh, the upper wick, not that much. So maybe this is a bit of a sign that it won't work out. But the rest of the criteria is met. And when it's technical analysis, we've got to give and take on just some areas. Let's keep reading. The formation is bearish because the price tried to rise significantly during the day, but then the sellers took over and pushed the price back down towards the open. So what caused Sol's freak price dump? This is specifically what caused it. It's, price, it's uh, supply and demand. Could it have been something that came up in the news? Maybe. But when we get to these extreme levels of the market, you can see the history of Solana now. That is very, very extreme. Up to $130 and in uh, the course of a year, you know, it's 1st of September, that was at a price of around $4, all right? It did cool back down to around a dollar or $2 as well. So the returns have been absolutely insane on the Solana and it has cooled off before. We've seen it happen and looks like maybe we're getting another cooling off. We also see extreme volume. 
And you know what happens with extreme volume? That generally calls the market for a period of time. It might not be the end, the absolute end forever. But we also saw this on Cardano uh, back in February when we talked about it on the channel as a potential area to just be cautious, maybe not get sucked into the hype at this point. Now, of course, that's the way I play the market and everyone has to have their own particular plan and do what feels right to them because at the end of the day, you don't want to be following something that you hear online, get pissed off at it that it didn't work for you because you had your own ideas. It's always better to follow your own ideas, keep a written record of them so that if you were wrong, you can learn from those mistakes. That's pretty much the way I like to look at things and the way I, I work in the market. What does the shooting star tell you? It's most effective when it forms after a series of three or more consecutive rising candles with higher highs. Did we see that? We saw one, two, three rising candles with higher highs. Then there was a, what I call an inside day, but you can see it's red here as it had a lower close, but the high was lower and the low was higher. So it's an inside day for me. I'm not that concerned with it. And then another day pushed right up again and then we formed the shooting star. So we did have the one, two, three. Met that criteria as well. The next candle's high must stay below the high of the shooting star and then proceed to close below the close of the shooting star. Okay, so we're currently in the next day. Here is the close at about $108. What is it telling us we have to do? it has to be the next candle's high must stay below the high of the shooting star. That looks like it might work out for today's uh, price action. So we have to stay below $130 today in order for this shooting star to uh, give us the reversal and, and head south. Maybe we get a quick dump to around 80 bucks. This is, these are some previous resistance levels. That might be a good area to reload. Maybe we get it a little bit higher. We'll just wait and see. That's, that's not the concern right now. The concern is, is this market going to fall? Uh, a day down after a shooting star helps confirm the price reversal and indicates the price could continue to fall. Well, of course, you know, if the price is down, then potentially we might see further falls. That could be the little area here that people might get mixed up thinking, well, it's been one day down, let's turn around and go back up. If the price ultimately continues to rise, the uptrend is still intact. Okay, so we could get something like this bar back here, this little area that I circled, this was on 17th of August. So we saw a significant price run and the market went to a new all-time high. There's the bar. I can take this off now so you know which one we're talking about. Big volume. We had the key reversal. We had uh, a few. We had one, two, three up days here. Another few, another few. We had a few here but with a little insight in between. So that's meeting that criteria. Uh, we're above all-time highs, high volume. The body is small. The wick is huge. What happens next? Let's zoom in. Next, the day just went straight up. So that quickly invalidates this bar and we know, okay, this probably isn't the end of the run. And as you can see from the history, market continues to go up. And this is where we currently see ourselves now. So there was a little bit of a pullback, but we still continued up straight after that bar there. So it invalidated it very quickly. That's what we want to see if this is not going to be a reversal bar. Limitations of the shooting star. Always important to note if we're going to be using this in our trading and investing. We're trying to look for areas that are going to give us better entry opportunities and also keep us safe from not jumping in blindly to the tops of the market. So limitations of the shooting star. One candle isn't all that significant in a major uptrend. This is why confirmation is required. So that's what we're going to see what happens over this next day. And of course, if we get the breakdown beneath yesterday's low, which was uh, $103, that could give us a little bit of sign that maybe we have some sideways action to, to go for the market to catch up, just to take a breath because it's really just run up so much at this point in time. It's been great. We've been bullish. We've been enjoying the gains from 20, 30, 50 bucks. Uh, but sometimes the market needs to take a break reaccumulate before it can move again. And here is an example of that. Uh, just back in March of this year, you can see the market had a bit of time off and it just took off. It went from a dollar something to $18. So it's more than a 10x in just a couple of months. The market needed some time to cool off, take a bit of a breather before it could start on its next leg. What was the decline? The decline was approximately 
Then we also saw that decline in the May correction and the decline here came out at around 67%. What could we see this time? I would just pick somewhere in between a 30 to 70% decline. Where does that lead us? From the top at 130 bucks, 30% down brings us somewhere at around $90, 70% down. I mean, I hope it doesn't go that far, but I just want to get the idea of the number. Then it's going to be around $40. I don't know if that can happen. I don't want to be the bearer of any bad news here. We've been bullish on Seoul for some time. Things need to take a rest every now and then. Uh, so that's a little bit of a tricky one because... Now, not to be any sort of bearer of bad news, it's just to be realistic of what price has done in the past. You can see even with the 70% dump, the market quickly recovered. And the main thing we were looking at here was for the price to remain and hold as best as it can above the 50% level. And that 50% level for Seoul was around $30. And you can see that it began to do that. Hit some minor resistance right in here before it got the break above and then it was on its way. So there were signals to get back in and keep us safe earlier in the trend. It wasn't the $23 sole, but it was here at around the $34, $36 sole. Okay, so that's the thing that I'd be looking at next is now extending our 50% level and just moving this to around $130, uh, $130 and our 50% comes out at about 65 for now if this top stays in play. And then that lines up very well with this low, the low that we saw just before the market took off. The 61% brings us out at around 80, which is the top. So there are some good levels to look at for now. Should the market take a quick correction on Sol as a potential reload? But as always, it's not financial advice. Please follow your own plans because what would happen if it came to 80 bucks and then continues to go down? How would you feel about that? Personally, I would rather be buying in at 80 than buying in at these peaks, uh, but you've got to consider your own finances and how much money you're willing to uh, risk if this market then turns against you. Do you have a, a, an exit strategy as well? One final option on the shooting star is something like this sort of pattern here. You can see that the market ran up into a shooting star, it came back down, but then it springboarded to new highs before eventually tapering off. I've seen that happen before in crypto, especially when the market gets really overheated like we're seeing now and the the buyers rush in just like we were talking about here, what caused the, the freak price dump. So we had a lot of buyers come in, possibly retail, then the smart money is selling off to them because remember, they've been buying lower at 20 bucks, maybe some have even been holding since a dollar. Uh, so they're getting very, very good returns at this point compared to the next round of uh, buyers which came in at 60 to 80 dollars. And so we did get that that sell-off. But if we saw a pattern, something similar to this, where we come down, maybe test some of the support levels and then start to make our way back higher, just be on alert in case there wasn't enough time to reload at these zones. That's pretty much the major thing here is that you want the time to reload, relax before we start to move on again. You don't want it to happen too quickly because that leads to weak bases and the structures tend to break down quite quickly. As an example on shooting stars for Bitcoin as well, this happened in 2019 and there are plenty of examples that uh, span throughout all the histories of any markets that you're trading. This one on the weekly, for example, uh, June 2019, this is when we got that big peak in the market on Bitcoin where we ran, we ran nearly to 14,000. And then it took, this is, this is on a weekly chart, it took several weeks to calm down before it dumped, tried to recover, dumped again, tried to recover, and then COVID happened. So it took quite some time in this case. I'm not saying it has to happen again, but if we consider the position that we're in in the market with Solana having run up a lot, uh, Ethereum on the move now, and also some of the other major cryptocurrencies having a move, at some point the market has to rest. And if it all rests together, then the sentiment generally turns bearish for a short period of time. That might be getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I just keep that in the back of my mind because I have seen a lot of these cryptos already move. And uh, the last thing I want to do is start to buy into everything so quickly. But of course, we'll continue to check, uh, track that on the chart and uh, follow up with it in the coming days on the channel. 
Speaking of tracking the markets, we have the Patreon membership, which you can find a link to down below. It's the first of the month, so it's the best time to be purchasing, getting into the membership as the month ahead. We've got plenty of posts, plenty of writings coming up, and you can check all of the previous exclusive posts as well. There's a lot of writings here and also video. So you can go back and check the history of what we've been covering and see how that has played out in the markets as well. So the link to this will be down below. There's still some spots for the 33% off. So that would be for the lifetime of your membership. Check the Investor Accelerator TIA Lite out down below. If you happen to miss out on the TIA Premium Specials, definitely jump on board with this and we'll see you over in the groups. I'll see you guys at the next video. Until then, have more fun to get more done.